This was interesting. Does Ray respect bodily autonomy? Force neck straighten. Like, force protect it. Force <laughs> airbag. Weirdly great, but also terrible rebel intelligence. I guess this knife leads to nowhere. And we are back. Today we're watching Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. The last in the new trilogy. What do you think about today's... Oh, I see your face. What do you think about today's episode? <laughs> Gosh, Rise of Skywalker, it has to be a 3 out of 10 for me. It's a super low score. It's just, it's not a good so movie. Much. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, the bad, There was bad pacing, you know, like we're flying through different events. Like, what the heck? You don't have time to catch up. The plot is just contrived. Just one contrivance and coincidence after another. It's bad world building. Like, I don't feel immersed in a world that makes sense. It's just... It doesn't make sense. It does. It feels like one scene is not connected to the next. Uh, the special effects were sometimes a little over the top, a little nostalgia bait, stuff like that. Uh, the conclusion was bad. Like, where do we go from here? Um, where did the Star Destroyers come from? They just they had factories just rolling in the unknown regions for some reason. Um, Palpatine being alive negates a lot of the original trilogy. So that kind of story arc that came to a conclusion at the end of Episode Six is now blown wide open again for no reason. Um, I do think that Kylo Ren had a good story arc where it's sort of a tragedy and he has to sacrifice himself at the end. I mean, I guess that's good. But in contrast, I felt like Finn and Rey were, and Poe as well, were kind of wasted. Like they didn't really have a character arc for three movies. And then, but also the acting was good. I thought every actor did a great job. Like I believed it in every scene. Um, so overall, besides the good acting, it's just an awful conclusion to the Star Wars 9-ology. So 3 out of 10 for me. What do you think? <laughs> I also gave it a 3 out of 10. We got the same numbers for slightly similar reasons, slightly different reasons. Um, first, there was super cool fight scenes. Like when they're fighting and it's just lightsabers and lasers, like super fun. And like choreography was very cool. And like the, the geometry of how they jumped around, very nice. There was good acting. I also thought it was good acting. When, especially when people, when you, you see up their faces and given the scenario of what they should be feeling, I really felt like the actors were giving me what was a reasonable emotion. And uh, yeah, it was very compelling. Uh, great visuals, very, it's a fun summer, flashy stuff, super fun. And, and it's a part of the Star Wars franchise. And the Star Wars franchise gets you pretty far just for being a part of it. There are cons with this movie though, and one is that there's scale creep for drama. And this is like when when video uh, movie number one is here's the stakes. It's it's one one hundred percent. Video number two needs to be two hundred percent. Video number three needs to be four hundred percent. And it's like it's just it's just growing for the sake of growing. I would rather have stakes be heavy stakes, not because we're just making things bigger, but because of a different scenario which creates its own problems and then you feel the you feel the tren the tension, the drama that come right up from the scenario, not just not just thrown from a a, a bigger, bigger problem. There's a bigger boss that you have to fight. Um, this, this movie also had problems with, with being fast and loose with force abilities. And so, so for example, Ray hands puts her lightsaber behind her back and Kylo Ren just pulls it out. So, so now we can teleport lightsabers. I was like, was that, was that established before? Is this something, or just, or was it something that was made now in the movie to solve a problem or to be dramatic? I'm um, also a force dyad. I mean, was there, was there hints of this before? And I, I think it actually conflicts with episode eight. Uh, very confusing. And then Kylo Ren, right at the end, Rey sacrifices herself uh, to kill Palpatine. And then Kylo Ren brings her back from the dead. Was, did he have this resurrection ability the whole time? And just, or he just knows how to do it first time, first try, because that's what needed to happen for the movie. Very weird feeling. I don't like that. And also Leia. Leia was training to be a Jedi. Was there any hints for this? Was, was I supposed to know this? Or is it just... You just come up in episode nine. Now, the weird thing is that if she had been training to be a Jedi when she was in her 20s, early 30s, then she transitioned away and was a diplomat, but then never mentions it again. And all our, people all around her have no idea about it. It's very strange. Um, this all is summarized as, from my perspective, as drama for the sake of drama. I really don't want, I don't, I don't like it when, when I'm when drama is thrown at me without it being reasonable for the scenario. I want the scenario to have, for, for people to have competing needs and wants, and then because the competing needs and wants don't match up, there's some conflict, then there's drama that comes from it, as opposed to just manufactured stuff for kind of no reason. And then lastly, 
the this is really fresh and really disappointing for me in the Star Wars universe to have these magic bloodlines. So you have like the Skyline bloodline, the Palpatine bloodline, and they battle each other throughout generations. It feels very pre World War One society where there's like a few families controlling things behind the scenes. Um, it, I mean cool i guess but but it also takes away a lot of the magic of star wars or it's like some farmer on the moisture farmer in, in a nowhere place like he's called to save the entire universe the entire galaxy like this feels like it's a hero's journey that anyone could be a part of whereas now if we have these these two families and it's just power battle between them then it feels like everyone's left out um but still i mean still a star wars franchise it's space magicians with swords like yeah it's it's super fun time should we get into it Let's do it. So this scene is early in the movie, and this is when we're seeing th this is Palpatine talking to Kylo Ren about Rey's character or Rey's origin. That's just like the lineage that she's actually a Palpatine. But beware, she is not who you think she is. Who is she? So Palpatine doesn't tell us the audience, but what he does tell Kylo Ren is that she's actually Palpatine's grandchild. So. For the rest of the movie, I don't think we get independent verification. Like like Kylo Ren tells tells Ray and that she's a Palpatine and she has like her mental breakdown because, you know, granddaughter of someone evil. But actually, like what if Palpatine's just gaslighting everyone? Like, right? Like how does Palpatine I mean, even know? He might have an incentive to do this because he's manipulating the situation and he wants Ray to come to him yep. so that he can turn her to the dark side. If he get if Palpatine gets Ray to believe that she's his daughter, then Ray is now incentivized to come to her father. But that could just be a lie. That could be, it a, could lie. be a lie. Yeah, at no point does Ray get like a I don't know, Star Wars long time ago DNA test. Yeah, it really she's just taking Kylo's Ren word Kylo Ren's word for it. And Kylo Ren is just taking Palpatine's word for it. And how would you independently verify? It has to be a DNA test. But then how are you yeah. gonna get Palpatine's DNA? Oh Maybe yeah, this, it, it, and who's the mother? Just some woman. Just who's like hey. I guess it's Palpatine's kid's wife, whoever it was. And that means that's post the assassination attempt by Mace Windu after he got disfigured. So, some woman was like, "Hey, <laughs> I like well, what no, I'm no, seeing." No, no, no. It, it's Palpatine had Palpatine had a wife earlier on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, then they oh, had did? a kid. They had a kid. Then the, the the son found someone else. And then those are oh, his parents. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, Grand, one, one generation okay, in the middle. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So he had a personal life before. That just somehow did Chancellor. not make it into episode one, two, three at all. Right. <laughs> just right. not he was. Which I guess it does. Right. He doesn't have to be a bachelor the whole his yeah. whole life. You know? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Weird. Yeah, but the no, there's no verification of Ray is actually Palpatine. Right. She just takes That's Kylo's right. Ren's words for it. So, so Palpatine could be gaslighting everybody about this, Inclu including us for the entire movie, <laughs> yeah. including, including the audience. Yeah, we're totally gaslit. This scene. Why does Finn and Poe approach the space ice space stations with so much risk? Why? The head of the space station. Slow it down. Like, whoa! Power what slide. Are what are we doing? This is this is some person's space station with people working and living. No need to come in all fast like that and potentially ruin something. What are we doing? Why does this come in at 25 miles an hour? Yeah, I mean, we're still in space. So, like, if the Falcon crashes into something, even though if the cra the Falcon is, like, super strong for a reason, this, if this breaks, you have gas leak into space. And now your gas, your space station is losing yeah. gas. Like, just, just come in slowly. Like, please, please come in yeah. slowly. Come in slowly. Yeah. Like, you would, if you were on an aircraft landing, you don't want the pilot doing some, you know, cowboy maneuvers. Get like, it tipping down. up the plane on two wheels. Like, no, 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 no. Keep all the <laughs> wheels down. Like, <laughs> yeah. Then it gets worse because rebel intelligence is so bad that they get found out immediately. Man, we're about to be cooked. We're almost there. Rapid launch. Six. Chasing down the corridors. Ah, oh, so. Ooh. 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 
Ooh. Okay, okay. That's a crane. That's a crane. That's the only crane. That's the only crane that this hallway services. Yep. So if I'm like the administrator of this space station, or if I'm just a worker in this space, I'm like, never again with the rebellion. They don't do their intelligence. They can't come here on the sly. They're coming they in hot. Like, they can't come in here carefully. Like, I live here. Like, please don't break this. I got like a billion credits of damage just from this one thing. Like, please don't come here anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Finn and Poe are just reckless. This is crazy. This is crazy. It's cool. Thrilling, okay. though. Okay, cool. Oh, it's so dangerous. So dangerous. So risky. Oh, hey, cool. What worked out? Yeah. If you go back to the Cloud City looking one, we saw reflections or something, a hollow falcon in uh too far too far because it's, yeah this uh, right here, the, the, the white city. one yeah right jump in here yeah the, there's two falcons one and see two two so that what means there's they're like skimming the surface of very still water and that's a reflection is that what's happening but i don't see a reflection of the tie fighters Wait, 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 so you're, you're saying, okay, so there's clearly two Falcons and that yeah. doesn't make any sense because there's, there's only one, unless it's like mm -hmm. some mirror universe weird, no, 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 that's, we're not doing no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> so you're saying that this is like a reflection. Okay. Right. So that means that there's like, like, like off the surface of a water here. Maybe. And so that means this is down and we're actually like cameras like upside down. And so the building is going up. Gosh, it doesn't make that's any sense, does it? This is the water, and then we're getting the reflection of the sky. But then that means the water level's right here. Right there. But if that's true, then there should be a TIE fighter there. Right. But And, and this, this one would be in the water. That's like on the surface, so... The surface has got to be in the middle. The only explanation I come up with is like, you know in video games where you can like send out a hologram of yourself to fool the enemies? The decoy that's thing. What they, the decoy thing. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what the falcon has done here they've they're like <laughs> turn on the hollow hollow falcon and okay. then that confuses the tie fighters because otherwise how does this make I, sense i don't know what this is what is gosh this? and, and if 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 this if this is the water line and the sky is above us and this is a reflection then that means there's light coming from the side what right because the shadow of the falcon is being projected onto this tower yeah from like below the water line no it has to be a hollow falcon a hollow falcon that they used for this one time and i guess it works they got away they got away yeah <laughs> yeah super weird i don't know what that's about super, i don't know what that's about and slow down. maneuvers yeah slow down there's ray over here and there is leia leia's giving ray the luke skywalker luke skywalker's lightsaber but um look at this condition of this thing Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. She goes on and does her training stuff, but but look at this saber. This is Nothing. this is Luke Skywalker's saber, and it looks in great condition. Um, and then it's been it's been like thrown around, like knocked out of people's hands, and hits the ground all the time. And this, gosh, first of all, how old is this lightsaber? This lightsaber was made by Anakin in twenty two BBY. That's battle before battle of yevon yep and then so that's 29 and then there's 35 is when the rise of skywalker happens so that's 35 plus 29 is 64 64 mm -hmm. so this lightsaber is 64 years old and it looks great yeah i guess if a if a jedi is given custodianship of a lightsaber they're responsible for maintaining it but i don't think there's been a jedi for quite a few decades responsible for it right it's just been sitting in Maz Kanata's hoarding basement. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, I think what that means is that Anakin Anakin's just really good with machines, right? Like that was his like natural ability; he could like fix anything. That's right. I guess that's also consistent with C three PO and R two D two. Like they're in great shape. 
They're in great shape, yeah. Because he, but yeah, he built C-3PO. Did he build R2-D2? I don't think so. No, no, no. R2-D2 he met on on That's right. the, um, and the queen ship as they were leaving. That's but he right. was in charge That's of right. R2-D2 for a long time, like took care of him. No, but. That's right. But he did build C-3PO. Mm-hmm. So anything he's built is in good shape. We've got two data points, C-3PO and now this lightsaber. As long as it's mechanical and not younglings, <laughs> it's okay. Oh, 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 no. Here we get some more examples of weirdly great, but also terrible rebel intelligence. Let's watch. We've decoded the intel from the First Order spy, and it confirms the worst. Somehow Palpatine returned. It cannot be. The Emperor is dead. Wait, do we believe this? Dark science, cloning, secrets only the Sith knew. He's been planning his revenge. Followers have been building something for years. The largest fleet the galaxy's ever known. He calls it the Final Order. In 16 hours, attacks on all free worlds begin. The Emperor and his fleet have been hiding in the unknown regions on a world called Exegol. Exegol does not appear on any star chart, but legend describes it as the hidden world of the Sith. So Palpatine's been out there all this time, pulling the strings. Always in the shadows from the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to stop him, we must find him. We must find uh. Exegol. Okay, first off, Maz Kanata with Captain Obvious comments. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We don't need those comments, Maz Kanata. Thank you. But also, so the Re Rebellion has no idea about these huge factories pumping out Star Destroyers. They, have no, they, ha they haven't sent any scouts into the unknown regions for unknown reasons. Um, and then somehow the spy is Hux. Somehow they know, though, to like trust him. Like he's not, That's right. He's he's not like, feeding them terrible information. They they know to trust him, so hundred percent on that. And then they've got timetables: sixteen hours until the attack. They've got. <sighs> That's English. right. They trusted Hux. They trusted Why would Hux. They trust and Hux? Like, yeah, because he's he's the leader of or the former leader of of the First Order, and there's totally he could be sabotaging you, and they totally take him as face value. Right, and. So, so certainly, you know, he has access to the information that he's giving. Mm -hmm. But how would you verify that it's true? Mm. <laughs> so, but they're right. It's it's correct right. information. So somehow mm -hmm. their Rebe rebel intelligence is terrible. On the because they don't know about Exegol, they don't know about the Star Destroyers, they don't know about Palpatine. They're completely taken by surprise. But then when they get the information, they're like verified. For sure, 100%, 100 we know it. We know it. How do we know how it's true? Well, we did a background check on him. We're good. We know we know the internal politics of the First Order. We got it. It's like it's like wildly <laughs> cocky. It's it's <laughs> it's wildly cocky. Yeah, yeah. But they got lucky. They got lucky, but they're dumb. But they got lucky. Yeah, but they got lucky. But they're dumb. But they're good. You got it right. So within the First Order, we have this meeting between Kylo Ren and the board. I guess <laughs> it's like executive panel, something like that. I don't know whatever it's called. Yeah. Imagine being in this board meeting and being like a guy who's like, I have personnel issues. I have supply issues. My, my team doesn't have fuel and people are getting thrown into the ceiling. You're like, I'm just going to be quiet. Like, <clears throat> this is a toxic workplace. Who just sent the message to the resistance. Whoever this traitor is, won't stop us. With what I've seen on Exegor, the first order is about to become a true empire. I sense unease about my he's appearance, read. General Hux. He's, he's reading their minds. <laughs> oh, like you can't you can't even think things. <laughs> no, sir. Well done. I like it. Forgive me, sir, but these allies on Exegol, they sound like a cult. Conjurers and soothsayers. They've conjured legions of star destroyers. The Sith fleet will increase our resources ten thousand fold. Such range and power will correct the error of the star killer base. We'll need to increase recruitments, harvest more of a galaxy's young. What is he asking for in return? Does that mean this? Prepare to crush any worlds that defy us. <laughs> Toxic workplace environment, like a suffocating room. Like I, like, I, like, I can't say anything, otherwise I'm going to get thrown into the ceiling. That's right. Let's say I, I have some doubts about leadership that I don't want to share. Mm -hmm. Why you have doubts about leadership? Like, I didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, but I could tell you're thinking it. Like <laughs> I can tell you're thinking. 
how do you're I? Like, you're like constantly in the meeting. You're like, what do I need to buy for groceries tonight? I need to think about anything else. <laughs> like, where's your focus? <laughs> okay. The, the only thing I can think is, oh, wow, that's a super cool helmet the whole time. It's like, oh, super whole, cool helmet. Oh, super cool. Yeah. And Kyler was like, you're not focused, but you're talking about me. I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, it's a pretty cool helmet. I worked on it. Yeah. Gosh, if you had these, you'd have to have a second meeting with like yeah, people yeah. who are like, okay, Kylo, we understand where he's at, but we also have, we have to like supplies, logistics, that's right. That's right. schedules, financing, all of that. Like we could do that at a separate meeting where we can sort of be a little more honest without getting thrown to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. What if you're like, I have a personnel problem and then Kylo Ren's like, we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. We need a separate meeting where we'll ta- handle the logistics of the first order. Yeah. Seriously. Plus, this one guy is like mouthing off about Palpatine. Like, what are you doing? Conjurers you know that they're and space wizards. Like, like you got a right. conjurer and soothsayer right here leading the meeting. <laughs> what right. are you doing? What are you doing? He's got. Well, you've seen force lightning and f- force choking, and now force sealing. Even if you uh, haven't, read the room. Like everybody else is terrified of this dude. Like that's right. Eh, don't push buttons. In fact, you would be like, why is this guy in charge? What makes him special? He's younger than everybody. What mm-hmm. makes him special? Is it because he's a conjurer and a soothsayer, maybe? Let's dial down the comments. Gosh, I mean, even, even in this conversation, when he reads Huck's mind, you got to be like, how did he do that? Ooh, that's not good. Ooh. Like, ooh, he might be thinking, he might be reading my mind. How did this guy get so high in the first order without understanding force abilities? What is that? That's right. <laughs> yeah, because especially because the the leader Snoke Snoke was a Force user, and so they they followed him. That's right, and it's it wasn't like a secret that Snoke existed and was yeah. a Force user. Yeah, it was it was well known. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> Transferred from like a different division. <laughs> His first day here, mouthing off, <laughs> mouthing off. I'm gonna come in that meeting with confidence. <laughs> so this is a uh, on I don't remember the planet the desert one of the another planet. desert planet mm-hmm. and Ray and Finn and Poe are on these speeders get hit by stormtroopers I think they should have been killed because they were thrown from the speeders like, whoa. Whoa. not a problem everyone survived yeah so what is it yep. Ray is like force cushion Force, force, force neck straighten, like force protected, force <laughs> airbag, force spine solidification for five seconds for everyone else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, they're, they're, they're a lot of speeder. They're going fast. Yeah. What if she's like, oh, force protect, but like you forget the ha- one person's hand and he's like all mangled and broken. You're like, ah, oh. that's right. Ray didn't protect my one hand. Now Ray didn't protect Chewie's hand, and now he's like sprained wrist, and he can't shoot yeah. things for the rest of the movie. <laughs> like, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I think they should have died. This is way too fast to. Yeah, yeah, it's way too fast, and they don't have like seat belts, no airbags, nothing on them. Nothing, and they land. Even though it's kind of a softer these like beams, beam I guess. things. It's it's soft, but it's not that soft. Right, and it's still a, it's granular I mean, solid material. Does does the, do their necks have enough muscle to arrest their spinal column from like wobbling around? Like no way. Yeah, no way. Even if if they survive, they're gonna be effed up. So BB is the only one that's still functional after this. Has to go on and take out the first order. That would be a thrilling movie. Let's see how DreamWorks. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they land in these this like quicksand, but they're like beans, so the, the quick beans. But where do they go? What happened to the beans? Okay. Yeah, it's like quicksand, right? It's like a yeah, like kind of liquidy. But then where'd it go? Where'd it go? And like every one of them, every one of them makes it down here without any beans. I'm good. Yeah. So somehow, somehow. Right, they go into the quicksand or quick beans, mm-hmm. and then they are able to flow through it. Yeah, and then 
burst themselves through the other side without any beans flowing through as well. Right. I mean, that's I imagine, super weird. That's weird, right? Like, I imagine if they went through a hole, if the person can fit the hole, then the beans can too. So that means there's maybe some cohesion between the beans that like holds them up. Even oh. Though there's like holes. So you're saying that like with like with the liquid, you have individual molecules zipping around, mm -hmm. but because yeah. there's some type of attraction between them, there's a cohesion, yeah. so it keeps itself as a liquid. And right. now solids don't do that. Like beans, like if you throw a bunch of beans on the table, they spread out. But mm -hmm. you're saying that these are somehow uh, Star Wars beans. Then they like they like attract each other, so then you don't get drops falling out. They like stick together. So I guess in in real life, granular materials like this like sands and grains they do have some counterintuitive properties maybe if you had some like maybe if those beans like rub against each other all the time and create all kinds of like charge on them they create this strong cohesion in the mass of the beans Ooh, interesting uh. so like even if you like flow through it the beans want to stick together because they're all staticky but some large mass will be able to go right through Stick together and staticky, but not so strong that they become a solid, I guess. Maybe there's like a, a narrow window there where the properties are all dialed in correctly. I still think like as they flow through, they would pull a few beans with them. Yeah, like in their open pockets or something, right? Yeah, they still have, still some would come out with them, but maybe not a single, it's one. A, not a single one. So this is a, a really strange granular material. Yeah, weird. Weird. Don't know what it is. Also... The fact that nobody got stuck in the beans, like they were all like forced down through a hole, mm -hmm. instead of somebody could have could have just fallen down into a non-hole region, and then suffocated. So somehow the beans were also able to like get through the hole, go down. Maybe like, these beans are are sentient. It's like this blob oh. is a thing, and then they all got excreted, and that's why they all made it out. And that's like why non-digestible. And that's why the beans stuck together is because each it's like it's a being it's it wants to hold itself together oh like the like um like the hunters from halo it's like like the big guys with the laser and the shield mm -hmm. but they're at like canonically in in, in the lore that there are a bunch of worms maybe like that. And they're like worms in like humanoid form mm -hmm. so this is like these little black beans in like an agglomeration are... working mm -hmm. together that together are a sentient being and so as soon as masses come, they just expel it right through, through the holes. Okay. 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 Wow. I can get behind that. I, uh, yeah. How does Ray find this knife? Let's watch. Yeah, I see it. They're back I in the tunnels. Yeah. There's writing on it. Perhaps I can translate. The location of the Wayfinder has been inscribed upon this dagger. Where's the Wayfinder? I am afraid I cannot tell you. 20.3 Brazilian languages, you can't read that? It is written in the runic language of the Sith. My programming forbids me from translating it. So I actually like this idea that C-3PO can't translate the Sith language. I agree. But but at this point it feels so like at the it feels so contrived at the end of a string of contrivances. So I mean, how did we get into this cave and find the knife? They were on that planet for some reason. Yeah. Then they were discovered by the stormtroopers and attacked yeah. while they're attacked. on the speeder. The speeder. speeder they that the stormtroopers hit the the speeder, which is already rare, yeah. and then they got yeah. launched forward into the air. They launched yeah. forward into the air and they landed in the pit of beans and got pushed down. Yeah. And then they looked down and saw the knife. Like they, they got right. launched into the right spot. So the the speeder battle could have ended anywhere. That's like right. They're not like they're not like making a beeline for the knife because they don't know where it is. And then they could have landed, you know, ten meters to the left and not right. landed in the beans. They're not gonna be like, let's go in there. They could have landed they they could have landed in the beans with everyone except Ray, and then Ray takes her pole and like pulls everyone out. Like, you, you'd rescue mm -hmm. your friends. Right? Yeah, so right. they have to all land in the beans. That's right. And then the beans have to be directly above the cave system that mm -hmm. includes the knife. And then Ray is like right right there. There it is. That thing in the sand. Like it's covered. It. Right there. And then at the end of that line, which is totally ridiculous. 
C3PO can't translate, which is the only part that I like. But mm -hmm. it, it just feels yeah. like, ugh. Cool lore point that like, C3PO's program not to translate Sith stuff, but it's like, dang it. Dang it. Cool like, what are we What are we doing here? Yeah. It gets worse with this knife. We'll see that coming up. Super dramatic, but like, yeah, yeah. But why? Why did any of that happen? So once they get to the surface, Ray and Kylo Ren, they meet up and they battle for what they think is Chewie's ship. Super cool. <laughs> like, cool. oh my, this guy's here? Oh my god. Can you imagine being the pilot in this thing? You're like, I'm a transport guy, like routine takeoff, like time to go back to the ship. And then yep. you're like, why isn't this going anywhere? Like, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? And like all the troop, the people inside, because this was supposed to be like a troop transport. So all right, the people sorry. inside, they're like, like, why, what, what, what do we do? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? We're, we're not going up. Like pilot throttle up. Like, let's go. Let's go. Why, why are we shaking now? <laughs> but this is this is a good illustration about about aviation that the most dangerous times is when the plane is either taking off or or landing mm -hmm. and so here they, they they just took off and so what what can you do i just uh just wear your seatbelt you don't know when turbulence yeah. is going to happen yeah it's a a lesson in always wearing your seatbelt mm. i mean actually it does blow up at the end so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but i mean but it uh yeah. But, okay, okay, but if they hadn't <laughs> blown up, you're not gonna have time to like scramble to your seat and put your seatbelt on. You're kind of oh, right. you're kind of cooked once this thing starts getting electrified by Ray. <laughs> you're cooked. <Jeez. laughs> the time for seatbelt is before the turbulence. That's right. This is interesting. The stormtroopers. I'm not sure how well trained they are because they capture you know Chewie and Finn and Poe, but then their formation is let's surround them so if we shoot chewy we're all going to shoot each other and all die or get hurt it's super intimidating being surrounded by all these people but yeah they're all in the crossfire they're, they're relying on their blasters don't go through chewy right like right and they shoot each other yeah so say yeah if they shoot shoot chewy once chewy goes down and if they continue to fire they're in trouble and then poe and finn leave and then Poe and Finn leave. Yeah. Intimidating, but why are they so close? Why are they so close? That's all surrounded. This was interesting. Does Ray respect bodily autonomy? Let's watch. Hello. 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 No, no, thank you. Looks like someone treated him badly. It's all right. You're with us now. I mean, it's okay for Ray to not understand what's going on here, but the little guy, I forget his name, the green little hey, rolling robot. Um, he doesn't want to be touched, so don't touch him. And Not the reasons that. for that are irrelevant. You can't be like, oh, he was treated badly, therefore it's a trauma response. Therefore, if I can get rid of the trauma response, I should touch you. Touch, 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 touch. No, 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 no. Respect the bodily autonomy, Ray. That's right. And in Star Wars, it's established that these androids are actual sentient beings. They're not just like, okay. they're not like a car that you can just mm -hmm. do whatever you want with. Like it's an actual living thing. And right. so if it doesn't want to be touched, don't touch it. And if don't it doesn't it. want to tell you that it's because of trauma, like that's, it's its business and it does whatever it wants. That's right. And it can't, you can't say that to the droid's face. Be like, oh, you were treated badly. And since we treat you well, you'll want to hug us in the future. Like, no, I don't want to hug you. <laughs> That's right. I mean, that all those statements are more about what Ray wants to do to the droid, not what the droid right. wants to be happy. That's right. So she needs to say, I have my own issues. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, need to, I need to respect the droid's bodily autonomy. Mm. So very weird statement by Ray. But I guess actually it kind of makes sense because she's still young. I mean, she's what, now in her 20s? I mean... She's still young. She's now in her twenties. She also had a very difficult childhood being alone. So maybe, maybe she like wants to be hugged. Maybe she views mm -hmm. that as like, that's how you give affection to people. Yeah. But this droid, if a droid doesn't want that, then droid doesn't mm -hmm. want that. Right. So she's really talking about herself instead of the droid. 
It's, Which, it's what she wants to make herself feel happy, not what mm-hmm. the droid wants to be happy. That's right. Hmm. And it would be unfair for somebody to come down brutally on her and be like, you don't respect bodily autonomy. You're terrible. No, it's uh, like, let's show some understanding to Ray, but yeah. help her through and mature through this. Um, yeah. If if little guy wants a hug, little guy will come get a hug. Come, come, come get but a hug. Don't, yeah. don't try to force it. Yeah. <sighs> This, this is a big scene. It's unexpectedly heavy. Yeah, let's watch. If this mission fails, it was all for nothing. All we've done all this time. What are you doing there, three PO? Taking one last look, sir, at my friends. This is super heavy. C three PO thinks he's gonna die. He is sacrificing himself for the cause he's fought for and fought alongside people with for decades, and wait, now wait, he's wait, like, wait. "What's the scenario?" Why does he think he's going to die? So in order for C-3PO to translate the Sith language on the dagger, the, what's his name? Babu Frick says he has to do a mind wipe of 3PO to reset his, I don't know, protocols. So essentially, C-3PO will go back to the factory factory setting. Yeah. Which means his entire personality is going to be done. All of his experiences, gone. Mm -hmm. Which means he's going to die. I mean, he, he ends up not dying, but in this moment, he's like, I need to sacrifice myself for the cause. Mm-hmm. He's, he's making the ultimate sacrifice here, and everybody's like, eh, what are you doing, 3PO? Eh. Hurry it up, 3PO. Like, 3PO is making a noble sacrifice for all the rebels. Right. This, is, this is a huge sacrifice, and it goes unappreciated. Nobody recognizes the, the fact later on that he was willing to sacrifice his life for the cause. Does he get a medal? Nothing. No. Unappreciated. I mean, yeah, that really is. Yeah, he really thinks he's going to die and he's going to give the ultimate sacrifice and they just they just push him faster. Right. And how many people mm-hmm. in the rebellion and in the, the thing that he's been working through for these decades have, has he seen die? He's seen, you know, he's seen Anakin die, his mm-hmm. father, essentially. Mm-hmm. He's seen Han. Han die. A bunch of rebels. Right. He's seen Luke run away. Uh, probably lots of other people that he knows die. I mean, now he's like, it's my turn. And he's like processing it. He's like getting himself psyched up and everyone's like, hurry up. Hurry up. Oof. Oof. We want want the language translated like, dang. Dang. And this, they have this like a token for the first Mm -hmm. order Mm -hmm. without Mm -hmm. two factor. I just carry this thing around. Hey, let me in. Who are you? I don't care. You have a token. Okay, you're just good. I don't need to, like, do I need to check with your phone? Like, no, 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 like, you got a token. But anybody can have this token. First order, captain's medallion. I've never seen a real one. Free passage through any blockade, landing privileges, any vessel. As long as you have the token, you're good. I mean, it could be as simple as, like, I have the token and a, and a registration mm-hmm. form. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're like, oh, what's your name? You have a token? Oh, you're on the list. Good to go. That's, That's right. like a, a double check. But instead, it's like you have a token and you look like a rebel. Here, here just come on through. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, are you sure you didn't find that aground? Oh, you, you, yeah, you definitely didn't. Like, all right, come on through. Here's the ship. Mm-hmm. That's right. In fact, if these things are so important, wouldn't the First Order keep track of every single one of them? They'd be like, oh, there's one missing, right. unaccounted for. That means there's one out there. That means if you see one. Gosh. If they if they don't keep track of the coins, the tokens, then what stops someone from just killing the captain and taking their coin? Like how how no, do you know nothing. that how do you know that this coin was given to you by a captain or given to someone by a, by a captain like legitimately or if it was mm-hmm. dishonorably like stolen? Yeah, you don't know. You if don't they don't, know. if they, if they, that in fact the only way for the for the token to work with no questions asked is if that's the case because right. if if they keep track of them they would know one is missing mm-hmm. they could do a quick inventory like hey if you have one let us know and they're like oh that's number serial number this one found it and then all mm-hmm. the way down oh there's mm-hmm. two missing that means we need to find them that means somebody may try to infiltrate us using the missing ones let's mm-hmm. keep that in mind so when you're doing your security checks don't check be that easy 
I'm down for the idea of a token that's like given to you by a captain and you have the official mm-hmm. captain's approval, but like follow it up with an email, <laughs> like, like headquarters, like this person's yeah, going to have the token. Right. Like I approve it. This is my number, my byte serial number. And if, if it's, if they're saying there's 20 of them across the galaxy, that's, that's a, that's an Excel spreadsheet with 20 entries. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And who is taking ownership of it right now? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's not even an extra. 20 entries, I can do that in the back of receipt. <laughs> it's just like a loose piece of paper floating around will be enough. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, so interesting. Cool, but it works. It gets them on the ship. Mm-hmm. And then once they're on the ship, the security is are, are super loose. Like they get on the ship and they have this token, but they don't have any like internal badges or any ID cards to get to the doors. Mm-hmm. They just- for entrance into Hangar 12. I know Chewy. We're coming. Credentials and manifest. Oh. Which way? Uh, no idea. Follow me. Yeah. Oh, wow. If they don't have badges to get through the doors, but they're clearly going around the ship, does that mean the ship doesn't have doors with ID ID badges? Like, wouldn't, wouldn't that be super easy to do in the ship to just be like, every time you go through this door, if you need the security pass, you just type your badge. But instead, I think it's just an open ship. But I guess if I guess it would be annoying if every single door had a security check. You're like, ugh, I just want to go to the bathroom. Beep. 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 Like I get into the stall. Beep. Like I just want to take a crap. Mm-hmm. But, but if but, it's smooth enough, you can like see you coming. Sure. Sure. So I guess it does depend on the smoothness. Um, I guess it's not. I guess they could have some freedom of movement, but do you think there would be some security checks mm-hmm. um, that would just stop them? Especially if they're going right. from like a low security area to a high security area, there would be a, definitely be a check. I mean, I guess maybe the first order doesn't they're not worried about that because they're so dominant that they're not worried about boarding parties like if you had boarding parties yeah you'd like you want to have these doors closed all the time that people mm-hmm. have to like break through them every time if you have if you have this hallway that goes all the way down your ship and people that are entering your ship can just go anywhere like the super insecure ship but mm-hmm. i guess it is super insecure because there was just a firefight in the landing bay mm-hmm. and the stormtroopers are just like la di da Business like, as usual. We're not even alerted. They're not, they're not like collapsing down to get them. Like business as usual. Yeah. Business as usual. Firefight. That's normal. No problem. A couple of my buddies dead, but I have I have orders to march down this hallway. Do, do, do. <laughs> in, but in addition to the security <laughs> risk, there's also a fire risk. Like, right? What if you have a fire in one side of the ship? If you have an open hallway, then then that's where the the fire goes, right? But if you have like bulkheads everywhere, then you could contain the fire. Gosh, and you're going to want bulkheads, right? Especially because this is a military right. thing. You want to be able to, like, lock it down. So, in, you're in space. If you have a portion of your ship, like, blow atmosphere, mm-hmm. then you'd be like, lock it down right now. Right. And even if that was motivated by fire, there's also... Well, okay, it's motivated by fire, but you could also have pressure problems mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and a firefight where you're like, lock it down, there's a firefight. You know, make it really difficult for a boarding party to get through. I guess I guess they have those doors, and I and later on we see Finn shoot. I think like one of this, maybe even this door. He shoots this panel, and the door shuts. So I okay. guess they have the doors. They just leave it open most of the time. Okay, okay. So maybe that makes sense because the first order is like, "Gosh, we never have any problems. Can we just leave the door open?" I'm so sick. I'm so sick of. of <laughs> Like the first order, the first order, like the corporate division, they're like, hmm, we should do a study. Like how much work day are we losing by people waiting for these doors? And they're like, oh, we're losing 10%. Like just leave the doors open. <laughs> the product or like through the roof. Yeah. That's right. Imagine everybody has to badge through the door. So it's like, I oh badge it. Shh, shh, One okay, at a time. Next person. Shh, shh, shh. It's like lines are building. No, no, no. That's going to last three days where someone like, tapes their badge to the door. Like I got it, everyone. Like Everyone. Yeah. Just open. <laughs> Open her up, yeah. Mm. This is interesting. This is um, the Millennium Falcon in like low mode of the engine has no blowback, but you have to throttle up and then you get blowback. So let's go. So no, no blowback. Now blowback. Hmm. So you're saying here, like the engines are on, and not when actually... the ship is pointing towards the people, it should be they should be getting some, should be getting like some mm-hmm. blast. But it's only it's only when Poe like punches it and then it's like big old blast. Right. 
Yeah. So I guess that means in the in the configuration where it's it's actually not throttled up, there's actually no thrust. It's only when you throttle mm. up that blows stuff out the back. Mm. Um, I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. But if we look at the picture from episode seven, what are the procedures going on here? This is from. So you're saying the, first... the engines are on, but they're not like they're not launching forward. So so therefore mm -hmm. these people are okay because they're not getting the mm -hmm. backblast, but they are standing exactly where it would be. Mm -hmm. So if there was a throttle up moment right now in this picture, mm -hmm. these people are in trouble. They're going to get thrown backwards actually quite hard into <laughs> there's equipment and concrete structures all around. Mm -hmm. People are going to get messed up. <laughs> so. Need to dial in their procedures here. That's right. These people should be standing to the side or in like in the actual hangars. Yeah. So yeah, we discussed this when we were talking about episode seven. We were thinking mm -hmm. maybe the the technology in Star Wars is such there's no backblast, and that's uh, why that's they right. didn't care. But there is backblast. Clearly there is. There clearly is. So this procedure in episode seven is risky. The it's rebels. They're just the rebels are just scraping by. Like what? What scraping are they doing? By. Yeah. They can't even clear a flight deck. Brutal. Uh, more about this knife. The coincidences required to make this knife work is... Okay, so the the, the Death Star fell. Mm -hmm. And then somebody yep. standing in this like particular location was like, I'll make this knife as a reminder to myself. Okay. And then you've got to like bring this thing out. And that points to some... Along some vector... If you're standing mm -hmm. in exactly the right location, which how are you going to verify that? Um, about where this Pathfinder device is. But then that's not taking into account the degradation of the Death Star. I mean, it's in water, salt water. It's going to start to fall apart. So if you come back five years later and you hold it, you're like, hmm, this is different. I guess this knife leads to nowhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> Wait, let, let, let's watch it. Let's watch it. Okay. So there's the Death Star. Here's the ocean. Yep. Waves thrashing it at all time. Yeah, all time. Okay, that needs to not get stuck ever. Yep. This needs to line up. And then there you get that. So it's it's pointing gosh, if you were standing fifty meters to the to the left or any direction mm -hmm. um your lineup is going to be completely different if you're taller than ray if your arm is longer than ray all your lineup is going to be different if you're like left eye dominant or right eye dominant you'll get a little bit of parallax a little, little, little bit of parallax if this and thing this thing is sitting under the rain and it's also being beaten by the waves and it's not just fresh water it's salt water like the extra ions like rip through stuff and it's, so it's, uh, like you have a narrow window in time. Is is this thing going to be here in a thousand years? Like probably not. It's dissolved away. It's it's, it's mm -hmm. rotted out by then. Is yeah. it going to be here in like two hundred years? Like maybe, but these edges aren't going to be sharp anymore. Like even one hundred years. Right. Like so, this is a knife that tells someone in the future to if they are in this right location, if they have the right length of their arm, if they're the right height, if they have the right eye, it tells them where to find them. But like all these things need to be exactly right. Otherwise this knife isn't gonna work. Right, even if you get really close, like say you're within 500 meters. I mean, that's just that's just a slight movement in one direction. Mm -hmm. right? you're, I mean, you got you got the intelligence, you got the figure, you figured it out just to this location and you're 500 meters off, like you're you're there. You hold it up. I mean, you've made it across the galaxy. You made it to this right side of the planet. You're yeah. in the right spot. You even you recognize, wrong? yeah, you recognize the wreckage. You found it. You just you're in the wrong spot slightly. I mean, you're on the completely wrong vector. I mean, they're it's like even on worse. That. It's even worse because it gives you a vector, not a location. So from eye to tip, I see. gives you a line. So anywhere on be, that line, right? If this thing is like a hundred, if th is this wreckage is like a hundred feet thick. It could be anywhere along that thickness. Just, right. just check it all. Just and, and it's not like, oh, I'll just walk down the hallway. No, it's like jagged edges, metal. You got to climb up to get to a particular location along this entire vector through the wreckage. They're on a cliff, which means that this isn't <laughs> land here. What if there's enough erosion that the cliff falls away? Now no one can stand here. That's right. 
It, okay, but okay, you have to get across the water and somehow like, okay, I see the vector. Like right there it is. Yeah, you gotta like you gotta you gotta plant a flag where you were before. You gotta plant two flags so that like the tips lined up, and then yeah. from down in the water you're like er, there. So That's behind there. me. Okay, I keep going. Yeah. Just it's an impractical I... device. Why not just write it down? Put a little GPS tracker. Put a little right. Just put a little geocache in there. Actually, actually, that. Put a little air tag in there. Right. So yeah, and it there, yeah. You just give it a power supply to a little beep, mm. beep for beep, beep, beep. for here. ten years, twenty years, whatever you expect. I think that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, especially with Star Wars tech, you could do that. So you could, Gosh, you could actually, you could be yeah. a little sneaky and do some wave energy generation from the waves. Yeah, and I think Star Wars has that kind of tech. So sure you could put a little battery with a device right right where the thing is. And then if somebody has a finder, they can be like, beep, 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 oh, right there. And then they can yeah. they can choose however to get there, however they want. You just or, make a wayfinder for the wayfinder. Sure, why not? Or just if you want to know where the wayfinder is, just pick it up and take it with you and put it in a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just put, just take, yeah, because 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 whoever made this knife knew where the wayfinder was, so if you know where it is, just go get it and then put it somewhere you know. Why, why right. be cryptic you, about it? Just be just be hidden about it. Just yeah, and then if you don't want other people to find it, well, put it in a hidden warehouse. Yep. You got how many planets do you have to choose from? A lot. There's got to be a Sith version of Maz Kanata. Just put it with them. Yeah, let's give it to it's a little like, person that like collects it. Yeah, yeah, hoarding it. Like he's got a yeah. basement full of stuff. But who, yeah, yeah, okay, you who, can hide things by obscurity. You have just you have like yeah. a bunch of cups and vases and like you know like birthday cards from people and people. Someone comes into your your hoarding room and they're like, I ah, never mind. Like <laughs> I don't know. I wanted to. I don't know. And 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 the rebellion would never find it because there's no like ray like force sensing. There's none of that. So what if you take it out of the location where they, people thought it was? And put it in some random security by obscurity location, they're never going to find it. They, they could have tied whoever whoever made that knife could have tied it to a bag and just hugged it off the cliff. That would have been right. more obscure than this thing. You're like here's a at knife, same... and it points you to like actually no, that's a decoy. You just wherever that the knife lines up, it's just at your feet, like two feet to the left. Like it's, that's fine. And that and that's in that situation, Ray would be like, I found it. It's right there. I found Clearly. it. I force sensitive it. Yeah. Finn's like, is that it? <laughs> He's like, no, Ray, Ray, I got it. I'm Ray. I, I felt yeah. it with a force. Who, it's just crazy. Who made this knife? It's nuts. I just, wow. It's dramatic though. I mean, all like lined up and stuff. And, like, you're like, oh my gosh, it clicks. But it's like, it didn't have to be there. 